Hey, this is René and today we will make our expert advisor open positions. In the last video, we looked at the RSI indicator, we calculated its value and stored it in a variable called RSI. We also um, showed a comment in the upper left corner of the chart, so we know what the current RSI value is and yeah, we don't have to show the RSI below the chart every single time. And we already implemented a um, if structure where we check whether the um, RSI value is above a specific value or below a specific value. And I will change this back to 1730, which is our strategy. We will try to sell in overbought markets and uh, try to buy in oversold markets. So oh, I can keep this here. So this time it is... Um, yeah, time to open positions. And whenever we are above 70, we want to open a sell position. And if we are below 30, we want to close this exact sell position and open a buy position instead. So how do you do that? Uh, you can open positions, and it is really easy in MQL form, by just using a simple function, and it is uh, order send. If you use order send, you have to provide several parameters and we will go through them in more detail uh, yeah, right now. So the first one is the symbol and we know that already from the IRSI function, you can choose the current symbol by underscore symbol. If you choose another symbol like uh, US dollar, Japanese yen, you can um, open positions in different markets even though the expert is running on another chart. But typically you want to choose the current chart and that is done by underscore symbol. The next parameter is the command or CMD. And if you look at the order send function in the reference, you can see that the um, command has an enumeration where you can uh, choose different identifiers to provide the uh, yeah, right value. And if you want to open a cell position as we want to do up here we can choose the value 1 or we can choose op underscore cell and we will choose op which is for operation and cell so it's easier to read than just writing 1. So the next um, parameter is the volume. The volume is just how many lots you want to trade and we will go with 0 0.01 for the um, smallest possible amount. It is $1,000. And the next one is the price. And we want to open a, a market position with OP sell. So we, would, we should choose a market price. And the market price is stored in the bit variable, which is a system variable. And it always um, stores the last known buyer's price. So you also sell at the bit price and you buy at the ask price. So you can choose either bit or ask, but uh, since we are selling, we should choose bid. The next param parameter is the slippage. And you can choose a slippage uh, for your order. And yeah, that is pretty much if you send this order and the market is already gone like um, five points further than the current bid course, you won't get an execution because the slippage is too high if you write five points. Uh, I used to write 1000 points here because I want to execute my order no matter what and you can um, achieve this by just choosing an incredibly high number. Uh, for the stop loss there is a double value required and it is an exact price. So if you want to choose a double value for the price you can uh, you should um, choose a value that is relative to your um, open price which is higher in this case because it's in sell order. And if you choose a take profit, it should be below the open price if it is in sell order. I can also type zero and zero for stop loss and take profit. And if I do this, um, there won't be any stop loss and there won't be any take profit. So I will go with this for the moment and we can change this later on maybe. So the next one is the comment and I can provide a comment like this is uh, this this is a cell you should learn how to type before you make tutorials but uh, this is a commentary and it will be provided with um, the 
yeah, outcome of this order send function, the trade. So after the comment, there is a magic number required and we can pick any number we want to pick, like one or two or three or four or whatever. But important is that you choose a number that is unique um, yeah, for all expert advisors that are running at the moment. Because with this magic number, the expert advisor can find its own trades uh, when it comes to trading stops or when the computer crashed and you are um, starting it again. You typically make your expert advisor go through all open orders and find the ones that belong to him. So if you type one, for example, you should um, be consistent with this number in this expert advisor. And whenever you want to find a specific order that belongs to this expert advisor, you can find it by providing this magic number of one. So the expiration is not relevant for us because we are opening a market order and there is no expiration time because it will be executed um, directly after the command. So we just write zero. And the next one is the color of the arrow. And you can choose whatever you want, like pink, for example. So you will have a pink arrow that will look so beautiful. Okay, that's it. We got our order sent. And yeah, the return value, of course, should be checked. The return value is an integer value. And it is the order ticket of the order that is executed with this um, order send function. So we can store it in a variable like uh, integer ticket. Okay, that's it. I will show you what this does in the tester. There will be a huge problem, but I will show you the problem on purpose because I want you to know this and I want you to sh I want to show you how you can um, yeah prevent this from happening. So this is loading. Uh, what will happen now is the expert advisor will start. Uh, calculating and as soon as the um, RSI value is above 70 there will be a short position. So let me show you real quick. Okay, there we go. Okay, so this looks like a huge mess and it is because um, directly after the RSI is above uh, 70 it was here. Uh, it doesn't look like that because after the value was above 70, this, uh, the, the uh, market price dropped and it was below 70 when the candle closed. But uh, when the order opened, it was above 70. And here it was above 70 again and we get more positions. So uh, what we see now is we get incredibly many positions that we don't want, of course. And we see our comment, this is a sell. So this is working. Um, but there's a huge problem. We get um, 200 positions and that's only because my broker limits the positions at 200. If your broker doesn't limit the positions at all, you get like 1,000, 1 million uh, unlimited um, executions. And that is because every time there is a tick and the RSI value is above 70, this condition here is true. And um, if this condition is true, the whole body of this if statement will become executed. And in the body, we find this line and it says send an order with these specific uh, characteristics. And if there are 100 ticks, we get 100 orders, of course, because every tick, this will be executed. So how can we change this? We can change this by using the ticket number that is provided after the order sent was um yeah, was, was um, processed. And this ticket variable has one big problem because there are um, kind of restricted areas for variables. Whenever you open a body with a curly bracket and close it, this is like a restricted area for variables. And if I declare a variable inside of this body, like this, integer a is 3, for example, it works, but only inside of this area. If I try to use this variable here, print a, it does not work, because it is an undeclared identifier. This variable a is not declared in this context. It is only declared in this context. So, if you want to print a here, you have to declare it 
declare it in this context. So if I do something like this, everything works fine. Because now the A is declared in the context of this function body. And the um, smaller the context is, or the more in-depth it is, like in an if statement, or if I write another if statement in here, like if true um, int b is equal to 3, I can't even use this b inside of this um, body here. Because if I want to print it here, it says it's an undeclared identifier, because it is inside of an more uh, in, inside of a smaller context, so you can't use it in the um, context above. So let me just erase this. So that's the same problem with our ticket variable. Whenever we declare the variable in this context, it is only valid in this context. And if this body is left, so the, the computer uh, processed everything in here and will move on with the um, next code, like this, these lines, um, everything that was declared in here will be cleared. So all the memory stored, or the, the variables that were declared in this body will be freed, and all the data is lost. So that's, um, yeah, the computer does this because it's intelligent resource management of the uh, memory resources, but in this case it's not what we want, because we need this ticket in the next tick and that's why you can declare variables outside of any function or of any uh, context if you declare it here like in ticket it is declared um, in the context of the whole program because it is outside of any function or control statement body and if i do it like this i can still use it here i have to remove this in because uh, the ticket variable is declared already and if I do this it works fine with one important difference to the uh, version before this time this ticket variable is declared at, um, yeah, in the context of the whole program so it will be valid it will be usable for the lifetime of this program so whenever we want to use the ticket variable it is this exact variable of type integer with a name ticket and I can use it here I can use it here and I can use it yeah pretty much wherever I want as long as this program is running and when the program terminates the um, memory will be released and the var uh, variable is vanished but as long as the program is ran running we can use this ticket variable and it is always the same so I can just check here um, if RSI is above 70, I will use another is if statement inside of this if statement and it says if ticket is below or equal to 0, then we will open a new position with the order send function and the outcome of this function will be the new, uh, new ticket of the open position and we will store this ticket in the ticket variable and in, on the next tick that is, um, yeah, that comes along, we will see that ticket is not below or uh, equal to zero because there is a number stored in this ticket variable that might be one or zero or 100,000 or whatever the ticket number of this position is. So let's start the program again and we will see the new output which will make um, definitely more sense to us and that's so important that you have some security mechanisms like this and you don't get like 1000 uh, orders you don't even want. But if you keep an eye on it, um, it is extremely safe and the program can't make any mistakes. So let's start here and we will see as, as soon as the RSI is above 70, it's uh, the same thing as uh, with the last test. The RSI was above 70 but when the candle closed uh, it was below 70, so it doesn't really look like, but it has been above 70. And we get our cell position with the command, this is a cell, and the order ticket is 1. So whenever the uh, computer checks if ticket is below or equal to 0, it is false, and we don't get into this uh, if statements body. 
and we don't execute the order set again. Okay, that's it pretty much. So we can do the same for the um, buy position if ticket is smaller or um, yes yeah, below or equal to zero. We will open a position and we do it by ticket is equal to order sent. And we do exactly the, the same that we did for the short position. Um, with one difference, we do an operation of OP buy this time. And yeah, that's pretty much all. Oh no, and we choose another open price, which is ask this time. And a slippage of 1000, no stop, no target. And a new comment, this is a buy. And the magic number will be one again. It makes sense that every order uh, that is opened by one expert advisor has the same magic number. And zero and color will be crimson. So that's it. We end the line with a semicolon. And now, if I start this, there is no real difference because when we get this cell position, there is a value stored in the ticket variable. And if it checks if the ticket variable is below or uh, equal to zero, this is false all the time. So we won't open any position and we won't open any buy position. So what we will have to do in the next step, we will have to take care of the sell order um, or the sell trade whenever the RSI drops below 30 and we will have to close this position and open a new buy position. So I can show you this. This is not really working because the sell position is never closed. But now we will do what I already explained. We will um, check if the RSI is below 30, we will check if there is an open uh, sell position. So if, and you, and you can use order select to select a position, it is a function which is really important and yeah, we will use this function in pretty much every expert advisor. And it has three parameters, an index and a select type and a pool. Um, yeah, but we don't need this pool because there are two possibilities to select orders. You can either select by position or select by ticket. And since we have a ticket stored in our ticket variable, we can just use this by providing the ticket as an index and we select by ticket. It is an enumeration. You can select by ticket or select by position, but we select by ticket because we have a ticket. And um, that's why we don't have to provide a pool. Uh, you only, only need the pool if you select by position, because in that case you can select from the open positions that are currently open, and you can select from the historical positions that are closed already. But if you select by position, you don't need this. And this is a working if statement condition already, because the order select function returns a boolean value which is true or false. And whenever a condition is true or false, that is that is working and it's enough for the if statement to check this. So if there is an open um, order, if we are able to select a order, we want to check, we want to, we also want to check if this order is a um, cell position. And you can do this by combining two um, conditions with this end and sign. This is a logical operator, which can combine different uh, conditions into one big condition. So we check if the order type is equal to OP cell, which is the exact order type of the cell position. And order type is a function which returns the um, order type of the currently selected order. That, uh, that's really important because right before we used the order type function, we selected an order with the order select function. And you always have to use um, the order select function before you uh, retrieve the order type with this order type function because only then you have a order selected and you can retrieve the right order type. So if you choose um, or if you call order type without selecting, a, selecting an order before, this will lead to some results that are unwanted and that may cause problems in your course code. So um, if you do this, we make sure that there is an open order and the order type is of type OP cell. In that case, we choose uh, another if statement and we write order close. 
if we do this, we will have to write uh, to provide a ticket and we get it by order ticket, which is similar to order type, just that it returns a ticket. So this is the ticket of the currently selected order that we selected with order select before. And this order is um, selected for, um, for the whole time, pretty much. Um, only when you use order select again, a new order will be selected. But as long as this doesn't happen, the same order that we select here will be in the cache and will be stored for all functions that um, require a selected order, like order ticket, order type, or order lots, or um, yeah, something like that. And um, order lots, yeah, you, you might uh, imagine already it returns the lots of the currently selected order. And afterwards, we have to provide a price for closing this position. And we always close a cell position uh, with the ask price, a slippage of 1000 again, and a color of pink again, maybe. So if we do this, um, we have another working condition with this function already because this function returns a boolean value and it is true if we were able to close this order and it is false if we were unable to close this order there can be different reasons why you can't close an order maybe there's a weak quote or the market is closed or i don't know what the broker might throw at you but you will have to handle it in this case we won't handle it because it's just for learning and testing purposes and um, yeah, in most of the cases, you don't really have to handle it because in most of the cases, you are able to close the order. So yeah, if this worked, we can choose our ticket and assign a new value and the value will be, will be zero because after this is true, we know that the currently um, selected order, which is the sell order in this case, is closed. So there is no open order and the ticket is um, yeah, zero. So we are able to open a new order and we will do the same for the buy order. I will just move this up here and check if the currently selected order is OP buy. And if this is true, I will uh, close the order at the bid price um, yeah, with a different color, of course. Oh, no. Color uh, crimson. Yeah, this should be beautiful. OK, if I do this. I can start the whole program again and you will see that this is a working expert advisor already. So you see, as soon as you know all the basics, you are yeah ready to go really fast and you can program expert adv advisors really fast. This is a really simple example, of course, but even with more difficult expert advisors, you can do it in yeah, like really no time at all because the M12 for framework and the MetaTrader 4 is so strong. So oh, if we have a look at this, I can attach to the RSI indicator. We can see that whenever there is a value that is below 30, we get a buy position like this. If the value is above 70, then yeah, it was above 70. Uh, you close the buy position, you get a sell position. And if the value is below 30 again, you get a new buy position and so on and so on. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So this is our expert advisor right now. And what we don't have is um, a stop loss and a take profit and everything. And I maybe make another video after this one where I will explain those things or I will just keep this expert advisor as it is. As it is and move on to new projects for this channel and explain some yeah tips and tricks about automated trading in general so stay tuned and um, subscribe to this channel please and give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it and if you learned at least a bit about automated trading thanks for watching i will see you next time goodbye